Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. When I was a senior in high school, I once turned on the evening news on television and I saw a news clip about a human powered bicycle that had traveled across the English Channel, which is about 21 miles long. And I was transfixed watching this news clip. It was only 10 or 20 seconds. And it got me thinking that if this human powered airplane, which was powered by a world class bicyclist and hang glider pilot named Brian Allen, if this human powered airplane had some stored battery power, then the person who would be the human power could, uh, be from somebody who's not a world-class bicyclist. So now it's almost 40 years later and I wanted to revisit this human-powered flight and I've assembled some ideas here just to share with you. So here is Paul McCready, the engineer who designed this plane. Uh, uh, just a brilliant engineer from Southern California and um, there was a challenge, uh, uh, a contest and he won this contest as the first person to design a human-powered airplane that could cross the English Channel. Here's the pilot, Brian Allen, who I think is still working for NASA these days as an engineer or scientist. And there's, uh, he was a young fellow back in 1979, maybe in his early 20s or so. Uh, very, very strong bicyclist and a hang glider pilot. So he had both of these skills. Let's take a quick uh, look at some video from that flight. I grabbed this off of YouTube. Here's about 10 or 15 seconds. As you're watching this video, you can see that the um, this plane is flying at only about 10 miles an hour. And it's flying about 5 feet above the water. So that was pretty fascinating to watch it. He made it the whole way. The flight was taken off, I think, at 5 a.m. when there wasn't much wind. So some people, including myself, believe this aeronautic achievement to be on par with landing a human being on the moon. That was 10 years earlier, 1969. And when I was watching this in 1979, I said, this is a very significant human aeronautics achievement perhaps on par with that earlier achievement. So now, now it's time to revisit human power flight with the tools and techniques now available to us. We've got all sorts of new and interesting technologies. We can take human powered flight far beyond the province of world class bicyclists. Let's think about this. So that many people can experience flight powered only by their own muscle power. Here are a few ideas in that regard. So there's new technologies that can be applied to human power flight, such as storage technologies, batteries, lightweight, powerful electric motors. They already have these uh, electric motors for the solar airplanes. Those could be applied to uh, human powered flight in conjunction with the best of the uh, best of breed battery technologies, 3D printing so that we could create kits um, where the planes could be assembled. Uh, when parts of the plane would be 3D printed. Uh, new materials, carbon fiber struts for the, for the wings and, and fabric for the wings with new materials. Uh, using storage technologies, even people who are not so physically fit can store their exercise for, for a short flight. Their exercise could be stored via any of multiple methods, including a gentle hike up a hill with a reverse elevator to capture their potential energy as they descend the hill, or energy could be stored via stationary bicycles, rowing machines, weightlifting machines, or pushing a merry-go-round on the playground. Conceivably, five hours of physical activity could be saved for a five-minute human-powered flight, so that five hours is 300 minutes, and that would be a 60 to 1 ratio. In that way, the exercise need not be very vigorous. Youth and adults living with obesity could potentially have the experience of flying an airplane under their own power. Wouldn't that be interesting? That'd be wonderful. This might have positive health consequences for such individuals and for society as a whole. A five-minute human-powered flight 
could be sufficient for an airplane to cross a river that's not very wide. For example, in the Washington DC area, the Potomac River is only about a quarter mile wide if you go travel north of the city, about 50 miles northwest of the city. The Potomac River, which is a major river, is not that wide. And you, can, you could possibly have short human-powered flight in some indoor venues, such as a large conference center, or in outdoor venues that can be protected from the wind, because these human-powered flights, they really don't, they don't mix well with wind. Um, storage of human power in physical education classes could make for some interesting flight competitions between schools, with the most highly respected teacher at each school serving as a pilot of the human-powered airplane representing their school. When you increase purpose, you increase meaning. And here's a quote from Leonardo da Vinci. For once you have tasted flight, you will walk the earth with your eyes turned skywards, for there you have been, and there you will long to return. So this is Phil Shapiro. I hope you got some interesting ideas from this short little wondering aloud kind of thing. Uh, send me some email. You can follow me on Twitter. For those who might be wondering, I made this with uh, the LibreOffice. This presentation was made with LibreOffice. I'm using the screencasting software called Simple Screen Recorder. Um, I use my Logitech webcam. I have a Linux laptop. This is a Core 2 Duo laptop. It's about 10 years old. I like to use older equipment because it's the same equipment that other people can use. And um, I'm also using this software called Camoso, K-A-M-O-S-O, and that is my little webcam software, which is roughly equivalent to like Photo Booth on the Mac. So this is Phil Shapiro, over and out.